Ladies and gentlemen, the Double RT Boxing Show with Mr. A. Mr. A's thoughts, number seven, shall begin shortly. In five, four, three, two. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm your host, Mr. A, and thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the support. It is March 31st, the big day of Parker and Joshua's unification bout. We're just doing a other boxing talk to fill in the gaps, fill in the needs, fill in the itch. And this is uh, talking about another big fight. As uh, it suggests and says, Canelo versus Triple G. Now, with all the hoopla going on with the the failed drug test for Canelo, you know, you got people starting to come out saying there'd be a last-minute replacement for the belt. And some good names have popped out, and only reasonable names should be mentioned, you know. And all the right names have spoken out, you know, from the WBC. You have had number six, Demetrius uh, Andrade, and number one, Jamal Charlo. Now, obviously, Jamal Charlo has his bout with number four, uh, Hugo Santino Jr., but he said, hey, I'm in a camp. I'll pull out. I guess they'll pay us set aside money for Santino or put him on an undercard or something. And then from the WBA, you have Demetrius Andre at number three. And Daniel Jacobs, who is fighting Shalecki, he said, hey, I'm more than welcome to get that rematch. So this could be a possible way for him. Number Then you have for the IBF, you have Sergey Davidchenko. His team said he'll step up. You got number three, Jacobs. Number four, Charlo. Number six, Andrade. So the IBF, all their contenders are stepping up. And then what's funny is, on the WBO side, you have Andrade number one, uh, Jacobs number two, Sergey number eight, <laughs> but Canelo's not even ranked in the WBO. He's number five in the IBF, number one in the WBA, and number two in the WBC. Canelo's not even ranked in the WBO. That's that's kind of bizarre. Now, who deserves? Who would be more fitting for that title shot? That last minute replacement? Let's run it over. Now, Jamal Charlo being the number one for the WBC, he f- defeated, uh, what was the Argentinian forever number one guy? Highland. He defeated Highland. Now, off that victory, coming up from Super Walter Weight, I don't feel that was enough to get a title shot. And express, even though it was for a uh, number one spot, former champion, but he wasn't the WBC champion, you see? Now, if he was a WBC champion at the uh, Super Walter Weight and he defeated Highland, I'd say, yeah, you know, off his uh, previous um, resume, his previous status. As champion, he he goes into that shot. But the fact that remember he was the IBF Super Walterweight champion, and this is the WBC who has him ranked number one. And off that, yeah, he beat who he was supposed to beat. But he should have got Highland out of there. We we all saw what Highland was about. Jamal should have easily got him out of there. So I don't feel he uh, should get that shot. Definitely, maybe the winner, or we, we have to see what he does. He, he needs this Hugo Centennial fight. We, we need to see something of him. Now, going at the WBA side, which is, uh, I know he has a fight coming up. The regular champion, Ryota Morota, he's fighting um, number eight, Emmanuel Bl- Blanda Mora, Mora, I believe it is. So... I guess he's happy at his uh, status in the boxing world because he's the only top middleweight who didn't call out a Golovkin in this uh, replacement. 
And that would be a very interesting fight, but maybe he, his, him, his team know they're not quite ready for Golovkin, that jab, that power shots. So they're just going to coast it out. I would like to have seen, I would have gave him my number one shot to get this replacement. But it's a shame he didn't He didn't uh, call for it. Then you have uh, Daniel Jacobs. And number two and three is Demetrius Andrade. Daniel Jacobs coming off that really good fight with Triple G. And then he goes to Luis Aries, and then, which was a subpar, I, I gave it a subpar. He looked good, did enough. But, you know, even though Luis was surviving, you know, you, I wanted to see Daniel find a way to get him out of there. And um, <clears throat> and then now fighting Shalecki, and which was uh, changed into a final eliminator, title eliminator. On those alone, I wasn't feeling Daniel Jacobs was doing enough. You know, consider Luis Aries was a, I don't I couldn't even t agree if you would say he was a, a con uh, contending prospect. You know, he was just a prospect to me. And then it, that subpar victory. And then you go into Shalecki fight as your next one, who was scheduled in a, a final eliminator in a division below at Super Walter Weight. So he gets brung up fi and fights uh, Daniel Jacobs, the best uh, middleweight without a title, some would say. And that fight was for a final eliminator. Like, what, what uh, gives it that, that highly? Like, this is a guy wasn't even a champion being brung up, you know, in Shalecki. So nothing against him. A good fighter, but bringing brung up into a title eliminator against the best non-belt holding middleweight. His WBA does funny eliminators. Brandon Ricos Garcia. What? Jacobs. Shalecki. A uh, title eliminator. Why? So uh, on that, but as a last minute replacement with the name of Daniel Jacobs and that performance, it might be an easy and best making sense fight to make. If that makes sense, what I just said. And then, because I going into number three, Demetrius Andrade. He, the last we heard of Demetrius Andrade, and we just heard a little more of him before this call out of uh, his last minute. He's like, I, before the call out of I replace Canelo, all we heard for Andrade was uh, the end of the year. Uh, fight between him and Sergey fall apart, and then we hear we haven't heard nothing since that. And then now we hear, hey, I'll be a, a filling replacement for the Triple G Canelo if needed. And then after that, we hear that uh, Team Andrade accepted the new offer for the fight, but turned. But uh, Sergey's team didn't, because it was a, a total purse of three hundred thousand dollars less. And the first reason was uh, Andrade wasn't in the camp or wasn't in the gym because he was uh, visiting an alien, an alien friend. So that's uh, personal reasons. He he didn't accept the first fight, and then the second time he accepted the offer. Like I said, it's been reported for. The first purse was eight thousand dollars. It was eight hundred thousand dollars for both fighters to split, and then the second purse was five hundred thousand dollars for the fighters to split, and that's the one Sergey turned down. I guess Sergey feels he could get more money elsewhere, and I guess for that being a pretty good fight, he thought it was kind of pennies. But that's the fight. That's the purse that Sir um, Demetrius team said they accepted. So besides that. We haven't heard much of Demetrius Andrade. Nothing since last year's shakedown or fall apart from the fight. I'll be a fill-in. And now I'm this little mention of why he didn't fight Sergey. So, off the Fox performance. Before that, Kool-Aid performance. Andrade just... It's the same thing as Super Walterweight. That's happening at middleweight. Got the name. 
you got the seems to have the skills but you know these last couple of years you're just not looking the, the the part that we all really think you are you know we're still the boxing world still got the 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 bar on them you know like that dude's good that dude's good but i just don't know how long we're gonna keep saying andrade is good without seeing him being active so i think eventually it might catch up to him but Due to his activity, inactivity, I don't think he deserves to be a uh, uh, big fight Canelo replacement. Considering his fight was only uh, Atlantis Fox, and he moved up. And then we move on to the WBO. Billy Joe Saunders. He said, and Frank Warren said they would be a viable replacement you know his fight got pushed back to June I believe it was with Martin Murray and that fight obviously makes the best sense you know why not fight Billy Joe Saunders for a unification the undisputed you know he has a fight coming up in the same about a month after a month and a half Triple G could kind of put a, a little stop to his training camp right now, take a little break, come bring it back, or just keep it right on through the same schedule. Uh, if Frank Warren are, is already saying Billy Joe's available, so obviously there's terms that was previously given. They'll, hopefully they wouldn't screw it up by being, hey, we could save your card. But that makes the most obvious sense. Billy Joe Saunders undisputed. Now, I just don't think, I think it's too obvious that it, it makes too much sense that it won't happen. So my personal pick, I would like to see the number one, Sergey Drevinchenko, get his uh, shot as a last minute replacement. You know, he's been, he's the only true uh, middleweight. He's been in the top three for a while now. I think he's been the mandatory for a while even. I mean, yeah, number one mandatory. So I would like to see him just thrown in how uh, how the WBA, or I mean, sorry, how the IBF just threw in Takam, you know, for Pulev. Pulev who put on an injury. They went down the list to the next mandatory who was available. Bow. Gave it to Takam. The IBF, you know, all the belts, the WBA, the WBC, if they go down the list, Jamar Charlo, he has a fight. You know, he can't fight. So, you know, who, who else is the number one? It's the WBA. Uh, number one is Canelo. Number two is Daniel Jacobs. He has a fight. Then you go to the next belt. Who's your number one? Sergey. He doesn't have a fight. You know, the, the previous, like I said, the, the other organizations, their number ones are tied up. The IBF number one ain't tied up. The WBO unification bout, he has a fight in June 23rd, I believe it was. So if they don't want to make that undisputed, go to the free number one, the IBF, Sergey Devonchenko. That is my thought on that. This is Mr. A's thoughts number seven. I guess we could go into the little fight, you know? Actually, and not just say who it is. The fight itself. I think it'd be a, a, a hard hitting, bruising fight. You know, uh, Sergey will, will try and go in there and, you know, use his feet movements. It's his, um, that he has the style very similar to the whole uh, Ukrainian team. You know, it's, it's Vazdik, Ustik, Lomachenko, uh, Devonchenko. And I always forget who the other one was. I, I want to say it's the guy who lost to Amin. I always forget his name, but it's those four guys and someone else. And with that, food, with that feet movement and that power, changing the angles, with that uh, derail Triple G, as he's getting old, he's not looking quite as the stalker, the beatdown artist that he was uh, famed for. Uh, whether he'd be able to just uh, jab and control Sergey the way he did Lemachenko, you know? Or swing the overhand right on the shorter man. It'd be a really, really... I say a, a powerhouse. It'd be a powerhouse uh, fight. 
Well, like I said, I think it, I think being hungry and fresh and kind of a faster fighter, Sergey will have to find a way to get out of get around that fight control and jab of Triple G. Because I'd be surprised if Triple G just walks and um, brings the fight. Well, that is his style. It'd be very interesting, very interesting. Because Sergey goes forward, does a little move around the ring. He's good at it. But will he do it because he wants to do it? Or is it Triple G making him do it, taking some of the power off his punches from all the movement? Who's going to who's gonna go backwards between these two hard-hitting forward fighting guys? Sergey, Devachinko, or Triple G? That would be a great fight. Like I said, if there's a last-minute Canelo tainted uh, conbuterol positive investigation and they say you're done, but it was already positive, I should say. He's already tested, so it just basically the decision. If they come out and say, "Dude, you got you got your suspension, one to two years, six months, whatever they're going to suspend him." If there's a last minute replacement, because they're saying Triple G does want to fight the fifth, we're going to go with Sergey Davinchenko, the only available number one free no fight by the um, by by the other sanctioned bodies that we said again, Jamel Charlo tied up. WBA, Daniel Jacobs, number two, tied up. WBO, uh, Demetrius Andrade, he hasn't done nothing, nothing to deserve a replacement shot. And then you got the number one IBF, Sergey Devonchenko. Mr. A here, your show, the Double RT Boxing Show. Please subscribe if you are, have not, and new viewers. You know, become, become number 296, 97, 98. And become the who's going to be that number 300. Thank you for the support. You know, 300 people taking the time out of your day to talk some box with me. I appreciate it.